Elias. I am a master student working in the Dynamic Thermal Energy Conversion Lab in Mechanical Engineering at the University of Alberta under Dr. David Noves. And I'm here to give you a glance at our low temperature difference Stirling engine project and our latest prototype. So first of all, why are we researching low temperature engines? When I say low temperatures, I am referring to sources of heat with source temperatures below 150 degrees Celsius. These sources are abundant, especially in Alberta, in the form of geothermal energy on the one hand and industrial waste heat on the other hand. For example, the technical potential of geothermal in Alberta is estimated in the hundreds of gigawatts, which is enough to cover the peak electricity demand of the province if converted at 3% efficiency, which for reference is a very low requirement. And for waste heat, the Strathcona industrial area uh, has an estimated waste heat potential in the hundreds of megawatts at temperatures below 230 degrees that could be used to produce electricity for about 2,700 ho homes in the area. So we can see that low temperature heat exists in significant quantities all around us. However, this renewable resource is hardly being used because of its low temperature that makes it difficult to turn heat into power effectively. This is where our research comes in because heat engines such as Stirling engines can generate power from heat at any temperature. Stirling engines have two pistons that act on a closed working space filled with gas. The displacer piston moves gas back and forth through a set of heat exchangers, changing its uh, temperature and pressure. It's shown in green here. The power piston shown in blue um, makes use of the pressure changes to extract power by compressing and expanding the working space. Heat from any source is provided to the, to the heat exchanger to drive the engine. Now, low temperature engines are usually very small and operate, for example, using heat from a cup of coffee or your palm of the palm of your hand. Our research aims to understand large scale low temperature difference engines and how to design them to use this energy resource economically. We've experimented with prototypes. Here you can see the most recent two, which produce shaft power on the order of 10 watts from about 10 liters of working volume. We found that low temperature engines struggle with energy, high energy losses relative to their power output. To increase their performance, the, the focus must be on minimizing these losses, which are, for example, mechanical friction, flow friction, and heat conduction through the engine walls. Also, the importance of these losses and the reciprocating nature of the flow uh, made it necessary for us to design a cost, custom thermodynamic model to predict the performance of these engines. Here you can see the model that one of my colleagues designed simulating a temperature distribution through one of our engines. Now the next step for us is to validate this model with a wide range of experimental data. For this purpose, we're currently designing a prototype at a, at a larger scale. It's about 10 times the size of the previous engines, uh, both in terms of volume and power output, and it will produce between 100 and 1000 watts. Here you can see an animated model of this prototype cut in half so you can see its components. The first goal is to build a working engine at a large scale, which approaches the scale of a uh, potential future application. The second goal is to collect data at a wide range of, of operating points to compare to our model. For that purpose, the design allows to vary a lot of parameters. In particular, I will point out the mechanism over here that uh, has a variable compression ratio and the heat exchangers. The mechanism shown here on the left allows to change the stroke length by which the power piston moves, which allows to control the engine's compression ratio, which is an, an, an important operating parameter. Here you can see it with 10 inches of range of, range of motion and one inch of motion, the difference being the location of its pivot point here and here. The heat exchangers on the right are located in a separate module as opposed to uh, previous prototypes where they were integrated into the engine body. This, al this allows to replace them and test different heat exchanger geometries on the same engine. Once this prototype is built and running, it will provide data to validate our model, which means to judge how accurate the model predictions are and where the model needs improvement. Then the model can be used to simulate potential engines of an even larger power scale predict their performance and eventually help to design a low temperature difference Stirling engine generator that's economically viable. Thank you for your interest in our work. Uh, I acknowledge the support of FES, 
in Zurich and Alberta Innovates, and I'd be happy to take some questions now.